Welcome back to The Book Brood and to another edition of My Category Journey. We are on book number nine. So this is incredible. We've made it this far. So let's just announce the book. It is His Majesty's Hidden Air by Lucy Monroe. I initially asked Lucy to be the featured author for book number four, but her release of this book was coming out very soon. So we wanted to wait until, until this one was available, and now it is, and we're ready, and we can't wait to get started. So let me set the scene for you here in chapter one. We have Emma, who is a young mother. She's got a five, four, almost five-year-old boy. And so we get the backstory that in college, she had a year-long about relationship with this prince from, I haven't got the name straight yet, so I'm not going to tempt him. So through some flashback, we find out that Emma had a year-long relationship with our hero, Constantine. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But Khan is his shortened name, but they have not gotten to calling each other that. Not yet. They're not back there yet. Anyway, in college, they had a year-long relationship. He was upfront about, you know, being royally promised to some other for marriage. So she thought she understood that in the beginning, but, you know, living together and, you know, just how, how close they grew over that year. And, you know, she reasonably so got some expectations, and he asked her to leave in a year when it was time to get married. So, like, ouch, right there. But, obviously, she was pregnant. Another complication. And there's there's something going on here, because she tried to make contact, but they haven't seen each other. He has no idea about a child, but she she did she did her best to try and reach out. So there is something nefarious going on here. So, maybe Constantine's not as bad as we think he is with just the one-sided Emma perspective. So we will have to check in at chapter two, but I, every time I come back to presents, I just, I just smile like this because it is so fun. These setups for these stories are just, are just incredible. It's, it's great. I mean, we all know how it presents is. They are just so fairy tale and out there and, and awesome. So I will check in after chapter two. Hello everyone and welcome back. I finished chapter two and we have had a bit of a conversation, a rough conversation, a reckoning really is what we might call it. And I think we can all agree that we're all a little frustrated at how amenable Con uh, Constantine has been in this verbal assault that's happened. We know now that definitely something nefarious is going down because, because Constantine was not, was not in on some of the things that Emma accused him of, of doing. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to peel back the layers here, and I'm so excited to do it. This was this was such a great chapter. It was so it was so emotionally satisfying. It was like Jerry Springer level almost, except like classy Harlequin presents type Jerry Springer. So that's if that's a thing. So I will check in after chapter three, uh, and hopefully we have some more juicy juicy things to talk about. Hello everyone. I have finished chapter three, and so we have had some. Some progress on what's going on here. So Emma and Constantine, they, they've gotten to the point in the discussion that, that Constantine has, has said he wants to he wants to stay in their lives and wants them in their lives. He hasn't completely voiced that, you know, he was he was looking for her after, you know, his his whole arranged marriage and everything, you know, it kind of figured itself out in, in his favor. So he's got a lot of making up to do. Um, she still doesn't trust him, which for good reason. And by the end of it, they were having a conversation, a uh, sit-down conversation with a lawyer. So Emma's really, really still hesitant about, you know, what's going on here. I think Constantine's just, just moving a little too fast here. I think he needs to take a step back. But, you know, he we, we got a bit of a conversation with his brother, and his brother insinuated he's a bit of a difficult person. So we'll give him some time to figure things out. So I will check in after chapter four. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I finished chapter four. This was a pretty long chapter, but it didn't feel very long because it it tackled just a lot of uh, a lot of conversations that needed to happen between Constantine and Emma, conversations that involved Mickey, their son as well. So lots of lots of heavy stuff. There 
there was a moment there where Constantine was uh, coming down on the attorney that originally drafted up the temporary restraining order that caused Emma lots of trouble in life so far. So Constantine gave him a, a grilling right in front of Emma and made him apologize and everything. It's a good start, but there's still there's still more to do. So far, Constantine's been doing doing just about everything right. He's He's a little presumptuous on how things are going to go, but he is a prince, so we'll give him some leeway there. Uh, one thing that I really love about this chapter is, is just really solidifies how, how tough of a character Emma is. So not, not because of like, you know, she could, she's a super spy or something like that and can go kick ass, which those characters are great. But her just strength of being and all that she's done as a parent, as a single parent for her child, despite all of these royal obstacles that are in her way. And even when that royal family comes back into play and she knows that some kind of visitation is going to have to be worked out between, she's, she's not giving an inch. She's, she's staking her space that is hers as the mother of their child and is not going to give an inch on it even though it's a royal family she's going up against and she's got nothing in resources compared to what they have. It just it just really, really has hammered home how much of a fighter she is. And I love it. I love it's great. It's it's kind of a, a nice dose of almost your everydayness into into a presents, which just makes the presents part of it even more fun. So just a little insight into myself. Nothing triggers the waterworks in me, like any kind of trauma drama between parent and child. Like that's just like, turn the faucets on and it's going. So this, this book has, has had me going for a while. So if, if you see me a little red eyed in the videos, it's, uh, it's my allergies. That's why. Just a heads up. There might be a lot of that going on. This book has been so good so far, and I can't wait to keep going, so I'll check in after chapter five. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I have finished chapter five, and we are getting more more kind of a, a feeling out the whole kind of living arrangement and how that's how that's going to go, because Mikhail's going to be Mickey. Mikhail, the son, is going to be part of the royal family, and he's going to be recognized and everything, so it's going to have you know, royal duties and things like that, and has going to have to learn the lifestyle and all of that, which is pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool. Took Emma by surprise there. I don't know if we are all that surprised, but we're happy about it all the same. Constantine is is trying his hardest with Emma. He's he's laying it on a bit thick, um, but he's he is giving her the power in the situation. You know, he's making, he's heavily suggesting what he would like her to do and what we would like her to do as well. But she's not the type of person that could just give in like that and, and go into that. She's taking the proper precautions as she should, and we're proud of her for it. But we get a bit of playing house here, and, and it's, it's, oh, it's lovely. It's lovely. It's working towards, I think it's working towards one of my favorite tropes, which we will see. So here we go. I will check in after chapter six. Hello, everyone. I've finished chapter seven, and... We are, we are making our way through. This is a really interesting Harlequin Presents. I've only read a few of them, but it's, it's curious that this one, we're more than halfway through the book at this point, and it's been just a lot of interpersonal co-parenting, just drama and the history of what brought on this situation. And it's been very, it's all taken place in Santa Fe, in you know, in a relatively small area in regards for, in, you know, at least in regards to a presents book, it's taking, it has a small geographical location, at least to this point. Pumpkin wants to say hi. Say hi, Pumpkin. So that's, it's a really interesting pace shifting. But like I said, it's just been a lot of interpersonal things to this point co-parenting arrangements. How's it going to go forward? How are we feeling about each other? Now I'm scared. Now I'm scared because there's ha it's halfway through the book. And so something's got to go down at this point. Like things, the boat's going to be rocked. And like I said in the tweet, 
Lucy's going to turn the pain on here soon, and I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried. The amount that she's choked me up and brought on tears with just her happy emotional stuff, when the pain starts, I... All right, if this video ends here, then you'll know that I didn't make it, and somehow, somewhere, someone posted this footage to the internet and ended it at this spot. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I finished chapter seven. I think I got my chapter numbers wrong in the last segment, but I finished chapter seven. It's a bit of a long chapter. It's really interesting with this Presents book. I know, I know I've only read a few of them, but the pacing of this one is very different than the other two, and I like it. I, I'm not to say that it, it's bad. It is, it is just different, and I'm enjoying it very much, and it's going to make the payoff quite satisfying, I'm pretty sure here. And just the, the dynamic of it, too, uh, I, I think I said most of this in the last segment as well, but it's, it's really cool. I'm enjoying it, and I'm going to check in later. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Excuse the bells. The princess is on a tear right now. She has, she has a new collar and bells because the cats have been, been allowed to go outside recently. Anyway, I finished chapter 10. No, 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 I finished chapter nine. Sorry if I'm talking a little softer right now. Lane's still asleep in the other room, so I'm trying to be a little quiet. All right, so I finished chapter nine. So chapter eight and nine were quite good for many reasons. Uh, chapter eight, we finally had some moments between Emma and Cal that were just, just very, very satisfying and very relieving too because it had taken a while to get to this point. And I also got to thinking about something. So in, it was chapter seven, I believe, we got our first kiss, but this is a second chance romance. So it's actually like a, a second first kiss sort of in a way. And I got to thinking to myself, you know, what's, what's better? Is it that first kiss in a romance between a new couple? Or is that second first kiss between a second chance couple? Does that, does that take it to a new level? I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think on that. At the end of chapter nine, we're on our way to Miris. So that is Khan's country that he's the prince of. And we're going to meet the family. And this is so exciting. Like I've been, I have been waiting for this for the whole book, essentially. And I, he, I haven't even read Queen by Royal Appointment, so I don't even know, I haven't really met these characters outside of how we've met them in this book so far. But I gotta say, this, this book is just, the wholesomeness in this book is incredible. It is so, so stinking cute, so adorable, and it's just slaying me. I am just getting emotionally wrecked reading this thing, and I am loving it. I'm here for it. So I have two chapters left. I'm going to finish out the book, and I will see you at the end. Hello, everyone. I have finished His Majesty's Hidden Air by Lucy Monroe, and it is fabulous. It is a fabulous, fabulous book. This was a bit of a surprise for me when it comes to presents. I was expecting something a bit different. This is definitely still a presents novel. It's just not, it's not been the same kind of pacing or really kind of story than the other presents that I have read. But that is a, not a criticism at all. It was actually really refreshing kind of to see a different, see this situation, the second chance with a, a secret child involved in the presents arena, if you will. But let me tell you, the wholesomeness and just the emotion around everything that, that's involved with this reconnection, with this family, with the lost time, with the, you know, the time they want to make up for and, you know, all the times ahead, it's just so, oh, it just hits you right in the chest and just squeezes. Oh my goodness. What a, what a ride. Wow. I will definitely be reading Queen by Royal Appointment, which is book one in this series, because I, I need to get those characters now. And I think it's going to be interesting having read book two first, because I think 
Khan is perceived to be quite a different person in the first book. At least it it hinted at that. So I'm I'm anxious to to get there and, and see what that's going to be about. Uh, what an introduction to Lucy's writing as well. What just fantastic. Just what a ringer of of feelings and everything. And she is just the most wonderful person I think anyone will have ever met. Just so great. So great. Uh, great supporter of my category journey and just of the writing and reading community on Twitter altogether. And she's just, she's just so loving to everyone around her and can't say enough fabulous things about her. So Lucy Monroe, thank you so much for writing such a wonderful book. Thank you so much for tagging along with my category journey. We hope you stick around for more books to come, and I plan to definitely read a lot more of your backlist and any of your new books that come out. So that was book number nine on my category journey. So we're going into the autumnal season now, and so the next book is going to play along with that theme, and so I will be making an announcement on that shortly. And in the meantime, I wish you all happy reading. So thank you for joining me on my category journey. And remember, if you're tagging along, it is your journey as well. And I'll see you in the next video, everyone.